Hi there, folks. Welcome back to my channel. Long time no see you. Today, I just want to chat a little bit about one thing I have been thinking about, about reading, actually. Um, the, I will entitle this video, The Danger of Reading Too Much, which seems like really an oxymoron. I think reading is good, but sometimes one could read way too much especially these days where we have got a lot of information overload in the past we used to have a problem with accessing information i grew up in a small village i went to very small schools and it was really hard to find information history books or anything you wanted really some of primary schools don't have libraries the majority don't have actually libraries high school do have libraries but they are very limited and I'm talking of the past, of course, in, at that time, we didn't even have the internet. So there was no Google, there was no Wikipedia. If you needed, there was no Facebook. If you needed any information, it had to be written down in the library, or maybe you could hear it on the radio or television, if you are lucky enough to have those things. So now we've gone all the way on the other side of things. So we've got way too much information. It's too hard to filter which information is useful, which is real, which is not real. But I'm not gonna go into social media and the internet, they've got a place for the video, but I'm going to focus just on reading. And I'm gonna take it from my own example where over the last few years, I had enough time to read things and for some reason, I went down the rabbit hole of Stoicism, existentialism, some other sort of nihilistic philosophies, a little bit of Buddhism uh, in, in instructions. And I end up feeling a bit low on my morale, like what we see on the TV now, or on the radio, or in the new age libraries is a sort of motivation to speak where everything is possible, a lot of utopian type of thinking where we don't have a disease, we don't have a disagreement, we don't have racism, everything is nice and cool. But as you read throughout history books, you see a lot of wars happening, you see a lot of misery all along, and especially when you read the books that were written by philosophers such as existentialists, the Sartre, the um, Dostoevsky, the Schopenhauer, the Nietzsche, you rather start to see a rather gloomy picture of human nature. And you tend to be a little bit cynical, a little bit nihilistic, and to some extent, uh, atheistic as well, or at least, um, maybe agnostic where you start questioning things that you believed in in the past or you took for granted and and things like those i can give a, a number of examples and a lot of them but for the moment i'm going to focus on probably a few authors say for example 1994, uh, George Orwell, of course, it's not philosophy or it's a bit of a political philosophy. As you read it and you observe the world around us, and especially for me who grew up in a sort of military dictatorship, you see that that's exactly what George Orwell was talking happened actually in real life in some countries and might still be happening in some other countries. And actually nowadays with these lockdowns and the stuff, to start to refer to Orwell, to George Orwell, in his two books, mainly 1994 and Animal Farm, they start to refer to those as it is happening in some of the countries or the cities where some citizens are worried that uh, decision being taken are becoming a bit authoritarian in nature. But that's, I don't want to go into politics, I try to avoid the politics, although I listen to follow up the news and the uh, current affairs. I wanted to focus more on uh, philosophy, really, as I read from the Stoics, Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, their point of view is that life is, is a sort of suffering and you should be prepared for it, which is contrary to what we try to fight for these days. We want a world that has got no suffering. We try to eradicate poverty and the disease and all the ills that make us miserable. But 
the reality is we do rather prepare for those things to happen. Now you move with existentialists, especially the French, like Sartre. Camus is a, bit, is a little light, I think I like Camus, but Sartre is pretty gloomy. But worse, uh, if you think of the, the German uh, Schopenhauer and Nietzsche, but also uh, the Russians like Dostoevsky, you realize that actually uh, life is rather not necessarily meaningless, but it is really hard to give it a meaning. It is really hard to understand. It is really hard to rationalize what's happening around us. Even in the best of times, it is sometimes hard to understand human nature. What, what are you doing? Why is this guy doing that thing? Or what is the end of this car I'm buying? Even in our own ways, in our own ways of living, sometimes you can sit down and question yourself. Look, why do I have a big house or a small house for that matter? Why do I have an old phone or a new phone for that matter? And most of the time we don't have those answers and it looks extremely absurd. But the point I want to make is, as you read those things, you tend to be a little less enthusiastic about life. I don't know, It's maybe it's me, but... I have grown to be a little bit, to feel a sort of uh, an existentialist, this sort of a crisis when you start to ask questions yourself, like, why do I go to work to buy some bread? But if you have got enough bread, why don't you work 20 hours a week? No, I want to save enough for tomorrow. Who knows that tomorrow will come? And and you ask questions and in the end you think, you start to, to, to go as a feather, as, as, as a sort of contemplating your more mortality. And if you are, in the end, I will be gone. I know it's depressing. That's not the sort of video I want to, to see. I know it's not going to be very popular, but whew, that's the consequence of reading too much. You end up being exposed to a lot of things that either indoctrinate you on one hand or otherwise depress you if you're not very careful but uh, i'm not gonna leave you in a depressed mode i think as far as i'm concerned i'm not regretting reading those i think it's good to read those mainly to sort of understand the world around us so if you hear a war in syria or a famine in africa or a political scandal in the USA, you understand that history has always been suffering, you know, scandals, things happening, wars, and that there's nothing new. It has always been like that. While that is depressing in on one hand, it is also kind of comforting because despite all those things, including world wars and the Holocaust and the general side, and, and, and so forth, and the earthquakes and other natural disasters. Despite all of that, here we are watching YouTube. So in other words, humanity will continue to exist. For some reason, humans will find ways to overcome the challenges they are faced with and move on. That's uh, one thing that is important to understand and the second thing is on a personal level to build some sort of resilience. And again, uh, as you get exposed either in real life or in a virtual world to this type of uh, reading or uh, some people, they read, they live a tough life in general. Uh, they grew up in a very poor environment or in a country where there's a lot of strife. It builds a sort of resilience that helps you overcome the challenges you will face in life on a daily basis. So building resilience, this, the first one was to understand, have hope that humanity has always survived. The second is building resilience for your own self, for your own life. And the third one I can think is to know where to focus your attention. Because as the time you know that you are limited on what you can do, in space and in time and in money and in, in the strength, you start to think instead of wanting to fix the ozone layer or to eradicate poverty or to save the rhinos, the rhinos in the Amazon forest or whatever cause you really are fighting for or any cause du jour that the world is talking about, 
although they are good goals, sometimes you think those are very lofty goals. I, as an individual, I cannot afford to dream of fixing those unless you are, I don't know, Bezos or Bill Gates or whatever. And you start to look back, what can I do that to make a difference where I've got some influence? And that could be your own self. I can learn a new language. I can learn a new skill and I can paint my house. I can plant my garden. I can teach my kids a little bit math or whatever you want them to be. I can look after my small family. I can have got an, a, an old mother or father that I can make sure they age in dignity. You start to focus on those things that matter, but particularly where you've got a lot of control, a lot of influence, and where you can make a difference. Not that you ignore the global ones, but the point of focus start to become, to be where you know a change can be made and it is in the realm of possibility and it is for most part within your power to do so. So I just wanted to leave you on a positive note, but what I was saying when I started is that sometimes reading too much, knowing too much is not always good. There's always, not always, sometimes there is a bliss in ignorance. Thank you guys. Cheers.